Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tigers SRD Sunday version as uh, just wanted to kind of clear up exactly logistically how this is all going to work going forward. Till the end of the minor league season, we're basically going to do a podcast every Sunday night into Monday. And there's going to be a podcast dropping on Monday and there's going to be a podcast dropping on Friday. But the Monday podcast is all minor league stuff. We'll, we'll talk about, you know, we can talk about the Jonathan Scope deal, which is, you know, two years. And we can talk about that really briefly. But we're going to do three up, three down for each of the minor league teams. Philly ball is going to be a little different, but we're going to talk about what we like and what we saw. Uh, Chris and I are going to talk about the, when we get to West Michigan, we saw, we saw what we saw on Friday. And also we're going to just uh, give an update on some of the draftees that have been starting up in the complex league and Lakeland. So without further ado, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Doing well. Thanks for uh, for having me on. I'm excited to kind of run through these uh, minor leagues and, and be here. So thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, no. I'm excited to talk about it. I, I'm excited to talk about what uh, what we saw on Friday. You know, we briefly touched on it in our little uh, like two minute video. Uh, but mm -hmm. you know, t uh, Sundays are, are like the pool day around here. People come over and swim. So I've been outside all day. Haven't been keeping up too much. But uh, I'm excited to get into the baseball. Cause yeah, I kind of, you know, yeah. you take a break from it and you want to get back into it quickly. Yeah. I uh, ended up taking a, a nap in between the game towards the Tigers game when they tied the game. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to sleep for a little while. And then I uh, took the, I watched a little bit of the Erie game where Riley Green hit the home run and Sister Orkelson, they, they routed a really bad Harris. Harrisburg does not have any pitching. Well, I, I think today it was Carrillo, right? The, uh, the, one of the kids they got in the Turner Scherzer deal, yeah, Gerardo yeah. Carrillo. Uh, but yeah, I think he's generally considered more of a relief prospect anyway. So outside of Cavalli, I don't think there's a whole lot of talent there. And, and the biggest, the, the biggest takeaway I got from Harrisburg too, is that even the bats too are not really, I mean, it's going to take a while before the <clears> national <throat> or minor league system turns, turns something over. Yeah. But, uh, I'm also not, not a big fan of that broadcast. Horrible camera work. Oh my God. It was like, well, amateur hour on that camera work what the hell is going on well yeah i mean it's, it's just like poor lighting poor camera work uh, the announcers aren't all that great they I mean they weren't terrible but you know we, we've discussed before that not every uh not every minor league team is uh of a plus quality uh you know look at you Bowie. <laughs> no i mean we don't I mean, look at the uh, team of greg and matt down here which done a really family fantastic job I think the toledo announcers have been there for 34 years, is that right? They've I don't, yeah, long. I mean, you sound like it. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't mean to be mean, but yeah, he sounds like, you know, this guy who's seen some things. And of course, Dan and, and Nate out in West Michigan, you know, we, we, uh, we're we fortunate that we have a lot of good announcers yeah. in the who system. Does, does anybody, does anybody, Lakeland, no one does Lakeland games? <sighs> Boy, I don't know. It, it's such a black hole down there in the, the former Florida State League. I was going to say, because I wouldn't, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. Somebody mentioned it on Twitter. that it'd be a good idea for you and I to call a game. And I'm, I'm actually down to, two. I would love anybody listening out there who has any connection to call a game. I love to call a game and just get some, get, get oh, some time. Boy, I have a feeling that I would do terribly at that, but it would be fun. Uh, I don't know. We would, we'd call the Lakeland game via like StatCast. Like, oh, and that one looks like it's got 14 inches of vertical <laughs> break. And I'll as be far the as I can tell, yeah, it's in play. <laughs> There's but, a fly uh, ball to the left. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. All right, oh. that's gone. Yeah. No, I, Actually, maybe I could be like the Johnny Kane. Maybe I'll just go to like random people in my house and just like talk yeah. to them. Say, hey, what are you up to? And get yeah, back to you guys. Just find a little bit of a break. <laughs> Your wife looks at you like the same thing I was doing last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, back to you guys. Back to you. <laughs> Just head down to a bar and find a group of drunk women. That's yeah. uh, the old standby for Johnny. Um, <laughs> hey yeah, um, but. yeah, but uh, no, it's yeah. The, you're, well, every time I was trying to get a clip or watch the watch the ear game, it was frustrating because I'm like, what just happened? I heard the sound. Even I think there were fake, there was a fake bat sound. I really believe <laughs> that because there was a swing. It, it did the clock sound that, that sound before it swung. Yeah. I, no, I think, it, yeah, it could be that. They could be doing that. I know we know that Jesse does that every now and then in, up in Lansing just for fun. 
he does the sound effects, but I think I it just, it's a, it's a, a delay between the video and the audio. Uh, and yeah. I think we see, we see that in Tigers games too. If you're watching on TV, because Shep will start calling the strikeout particularly before the pitch gets there. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, he got him. And it's like, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So I was getting that on the stream the other day as well. Yeah. yeah same thing. It's like either he has like incredible intuition or <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking his monitor's a little faster than what we're seeing. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So in any event, let's start with three up and three down in Toledo as the Mud Hens were coming into play in tie for first place in the triple eight. So I'm still I really don't like the names of this. Honestly, I yeah. I, I wish they would have done like a better job of like even it's, it's, it's late. It just sounds really lazy. There will be, we talked about before, I think there will be corporate sponsorships at some point soon. It'll be the, you know, the Cousins Glass League or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I believe it's the AAA East Midwest Division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the uh, it's triple, yeah, it's the AAA, yeah, AAA East Midwest Division. They were coming in and tied in with first place. With run division rushal of 64, they've just been pounding the ball uh, right now. But as of coming into play tonight, they're tied 2-2 with the yeah. Nashville Sounds. And they are now one back of Omaha, which is the Kansas City affiliate. As uh, Omaha has, is, again, been hitting, they've been hitting the ball pretty well as well. But Toledo just been, has been mashing. And we'll get to that here in a second. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if they named it the AAA Midwest – or the Midwest, okay, the AAA East Taco Bell division. I mean, <laughs> like Dana Carvey presents, or Dana Taco Bell presents the Dana Carvey show. If you ever want to watch the documentary, though, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, or the like you know, you diet, do, Mr. Pib. Yeah, <laughs> you could do it by this. You can you can do it by like convenience stores. So, for example, AAA East North Northeastern division. Okay, so it's like Scranton, Buffalo, Worcester, um, Lehigh Valley, Rochester, and Syracuse. How about the Triple A East Wawa division? Because Wawa is out that oh. way. Mm -hmm. So, and then you got the Triple A Southeastern division. Okay, what's what's popular in the Southeast? Um, Bo Bojangles so, sheet out of where sheets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, piggies or was it the what's the name of the oh, complex? Uh, oh no, I was thinking of the grocery store, the yeah, Piggly the, Wigglies or whatever. Piggly, yeah, Piggly Piggly Wigglies, yeah. 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 name the Southeastern division of Piggly Wiggly, and then. Triple A East Midwest Division, the Seven Eleven Division, because everywhere you know there's Seven Eleven, but I don't know if there is in Iowa, but I know there's a in Iowa there's a come and go, K U M, yeah. and yeah, go. that's <laughs> tough. Uh, the yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not making that up, folks. Google. No, it. I've seen I've seen them, I've seen them in other places too, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It'll it'll happen I think at some point. I, they they will need to do something because I still want to call it the International League and the Midwest League and the Florida State League. That was all fine for me. The the Eastern League it made sense. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I don't know. They the Toledo has just kind of been quietly contending all year. They I don't I can't remember them getting on like any super hot streaks or really scuffling too much. This is kind of up and down this week. They got blown out a couple times, but then they also had. An epic comeback on Friday when we were out in Grand Rapids. I was checking, and they scored like five runs in the eighth inning or something like that to come back and win. So, I don't know. They've got some, like, you know, classic AAA mashers down there. Gustavo Nunez, not Gustavo Nunez, Renato Nunez hit another home run tonight. I think he's, what, he's got 18 now, 17? Mm -hmm. He was one of my players who's up. Yeah, he's. Although it's still like, it's oh, like 10 or, 11, 10 or 11 strikeouts in one walk. You know, so. The yeah, in terms of even like Christian Stewart, and so Christian Stewart had two home runs. Was it three home runs? Three, three right homers night? in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the, the Christian Stewart is definitely on your player up. I mean, it, it, in terms of even so, mm -hmm. a lot of like Lynn Henning made a really. I don't know if you guys saw that Lynn Henning comment. Mm -hmm. about, no, you saw that right? Oh, so Chris, he said, yeah. if it wasn't for Miguel Cabrera being in the way, he could be the next DH, and that was very cringeworthy. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that's his only path. I mean, realistically, yeah, like there's yeah. not really a defensive home for him. So, like, if he's mashing, like, he's going to be a DH because the defense is so like down. You'd only bring him up for his bat. You're not bringing him up to, <laughs> you know, be a defensive yeah. replacement in the ninth inning. 
No, that's in particularly with the you know kind of younger, exciting outfielders that they have. They're they're not going to put him out. They're not going to. You know, yeah. you know, crowbar him into the outfield just to get him in the yeah, and and we saw him in the majors and he didn't hit. I mean, it's possible yeah. they'll give him another chance at some point, but I mean, he's still putting up a two fifty batting average. But there was a, I saw something on Twitter. That I wanted to ask you guys about that pertains to Christian Stewart because mm-hmm. in the last, I'm going back the last two weeks, he's had three walks over fourteen strikeouts, and somebody said that in terms of prospects, and I'm, I'm miss, it was like I'm not trying to I'm interpret this word for word, but that walk rates don't matter in the minor leagues that much because based off the different various leagues with strike zones and everything. And I kind of thought about that for a minute because it is easier in some, depending on what league you're in, it's sometimes you can you walk less or walk more depending on what they're trying to do. For example, the Atlantic league numbers, you can screw them up, throw them out the door. You don't know what the hell's going on there, but is there something to that? Because I mean, I, I still think that Christian Stewart is what he is. He's a guy who will strike out a lot, not play. I mean, at a 30% clip, and I mean, the numbers kind of reflect that now. Seven home runs and 15 RBIs in the last two weeks. That's great. But it's triple A. And mm-hmm. if you're not, I mean, if he was hitting that, if he had like maybe 10 walks to 11 strikeouts and hitting over 300, then I'm like, okay, well, then the consideration. But I was just wondering what you guys thought about that. Yeah, for me, it's like kind of why, you know, evaluation is important, you know? And Triple uh, A, you got guys that are actually filling the zone a little bit, so that helps. But you still have to kind of look and see, you know, at bat per at bat, pitcher per pitcher, like what what is he seeing? How is he handling? You know, even average off speed stuff. Is he able to spit on that? Is he is he hitting the off speed at all? You know, is he swinging over it? So I think all of that kind of plays in where you can you can make some conclusions based off of it. You just have to watch the games. You know, you just can't look at the numbers and say, "Ooh, sparkly walk rate," and then you know assume that he has a good eye because that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, and I I think uh, it basically works one way. <laughs> like if somebody's not walking down in the minors, I think that's important. Mm-hmm. I don't think they they suddenly like. Hey, he suddenly starts walking in the majors mm-hmm. when he doesn't walk in the minors. But walking a ton of minors, as Jake was saying, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to continue in the majors. I think there were there have been a bunch of guys over the years who who had like these terrific walk rates in the minors, and then for whatever reason didn't hit in the majors. Like uh, who was that? Lars Anderson, who was a big Boston prospect for a long time, and he may have ended up in. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm thinking of him. Also, Derek Barton. Do you remember Derek Barton at all? He was a big time prospect, uh, first baseman who walked like more than he struck out, but never hit for any power. And uh, for the Tigers, I mean, Ryan Streepy once had a, a bunch of walks in High A. Or back then, it was High A Lakeland, but it was just because mm-hmm. pitchers pitchers were afraid of him hitting runs, <laughs> so yeah. they didn't throw strikes. And then you know he got up to higher levels, and they challenged him, and he couldn't hit it. So yeah, not all walk rates are created equal. That's for sure. Yeah. So you had, okay, so continue three ups and three down and uh, sorry, oh. take that. Side no, that, that's fine. I, I didn't, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to hijack the whole thing. I, I had uh, Juan Centeno, the emer- basically emergency catcher in the system at this point with Rogers hurt. He was, uh, last I checked, he was eight for 17 with a pair of extra base hits and, and two walks against one strikeout. So, hey, you know, just in case something goes wrong, maybe he could survive for a month or so. And then I mentioned uh, Logan Shore was was pretty good. He only had one appearance. It was like his first in two weeks, but uh, four in a third, perfect innings with five strikeouts. That was that one wild game where they had a no hitter going into the seventh or eighth, and then lost like eleven to nothing. So, oh yeah, sorry. Okay. I don't know. It, are you having trouble hearing me? Am I? No, oh, yeah, broke up there for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and then my down. I'll tell you my down. I, uh, Cody Clemens was great in July, but he's off to two for 25 start in August, uh, but only six strikeouts. So uh, maybe there's just a little bit of bad luck there. I don't know. Maybe he's popping out and missing stuff, but it's not like he's, you know, whiffing 50% of the time. Uh, Jacoby Jones, last I checked five for 22 with no extra base hits, no walks and 12 strikeouts. So yeah, we'll see you later. And, and Alex Lang was the, the tough one for me. You know, we mentioned Brian Garcia earlier, but, uh, the bloom has really kind of come off the rose uh, for Alex Lang, man. You know, he, he looked really promising in, in spring training, but they got bombed in the majors. And right now he's rocking a, a 5.94 ERA in AAA. He's got uh, last week one inning pitch, four hits, three walks, or, or 
three earned runs, two walks. His uh, he's walking a batter an inning in AAA, which uh, is not going to work. And I don't know he didn't strike me as a guy who's going to struggle with you know control that much. But I don't know. That's that's been his bugaboo so far. So uh, mentioned. So the three up, three down for me would be. Of course, we mentioned Christian Stewart being one of them. The other one, I, I in terms of like from a, a standpoint of I was looking at kind of the, again the Toledo's pitching has been kind of super hit and miss. Whether it, you you look at the just kind of the splits of what the how it's been looking in, um, in the last, I would go with the other pitcher would be Drew Carlton. Uh, Drew Carlton in the last, I mean, he's been pretty effective coming out of the bullpen. Whether he's just kind of found his niche. And he was doing fine until this. I said Drew Carlton. Then I realized that he's had kind of like a rough week. But before that, he was actually pitching pretty well and kind of finding a rhythm a little bit. Um, he had, was pitching six innings, but he's lost three runs this week. So it's kind of hit him up. But his strikeouts are up. His walks are down. So I'm still going to put him on there because, I mean, Carlton at one point is considered a Tiger reliever that was going to get called up. And so, um, and then the other one I would have put is since he's returned is Will Vest. Uh, Will Vest four innings, four hits, one run, seven strikeouts, two walks. He's picked up, uh, I believe, a save. So he closed out a save. And I mean, he was also I also put in in consideration and running uh, Miguel DePozo, who is on the forty man roster. Uh, six innings, two hits, one run, and seven walks so far in the series in the, in the last two weeks rather. So that's worth cons- some consideration. Uh, the up uh, down would be Mark Leiter Jr. And I know we just did, we were talking about him last week and he's been off to, you know, he's put up some numbers, but again, the fit, you know, FIP is kind of high 10 innings, 12 hits, three strike, three walks, 11 strikeouts. But again, this is a guy who's pitched in the majors before he would have an opportunity. If he, he was, he would be there. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence about him. And not, excuse me, not a fence. Not on the fence about him at all. I actually don't think he's gonna get some opportune time unless there's a major injury. The other player I was gonna put on there, he's cooled off a little bit. Is Yariel Gonzalez, who I'm I'm so sure he's been kind of struggling. 118, 167, 118. That, that play he showed earlier in the year is also kind of in the last month or so. And the last player being on that would be the guy who's coming up just now, Nico Goodrum. Yeah. Who's, uh, I, was, I mean, again, Zach Short made a boo boo play today, but the room's coming up. And I don't know. So you, you said that on the podcast and about him not being here too much longer. But I mean, I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy about it, but he's, I don't know, he's still kind of in AAA, six strikeouts, two walks. And 19 at bats. Yeah, you know, you don't know if he's just getting his timing back or whatever, but uh, I think I said that Zach Short is kind of pretty similar to Nico Goodrum. He's going to be a guy who who will show you the ability to be an above average shortstop. I think Nico's probably more consistent uh, on defense, but they're both pretty limited on offense. Nico's a little bit more utilitarian, I guess. He can play more positions, or at least he has. But he's also going to be more expensive in a very cheap sort of way. He's going to be like four million dollars or three million dollars or something like that. And Zach Short's going to cost you six hundred. So I think, I think this is probably it for Nico, unless he goes on a tear down the stretch, which he might. You know, he's got a lot of talent, but uh, you know, just can't stop striking out. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. I was actually a little bit surprised that they like made the move and didn't just you know kind of cut bait a little bit. But Two months left in the season, you know, Zach Short. I think that was his first option, maybe. Maybe he had one earlier in the season. I can't remember. I think he had, well, he had another option beforehand. Yeah, so, I mean, he had him available. So, you know, no harm, no foul, I guess, to to ride these two months out and see what happens in the offseason. Yeah. So, do you, do you have a three up, three down, or you want to throw another name in the hopper? Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, the same names you guys are talking about. I actually wrote about, um, you know, Stewart and Nunez, and I kind of framed it around, you know, these guys are are closer to a call up than than we realize, and I don't think, you know, it's a situation where either could, you know, play their way into a call up necessarily. Um, I think it's one of those situations where if there's an injury in the outfield, for example, or if there's an injury, Miguel Cabrera goes on the aisle or something like that. I think, you know, Nunez would be probably one of the first names to to come up. So, um, you know, those were two of mine. 
And um, kind of like you said, you know, Stewart, I know he's not, you know, super high average, but uh, a lot of home runs, a lot of power, a lot of walks. That's kind of what we wanted out of him, you know, all along. So he's he's kind of continuing to do that at the AAA level, which is kind of neat. And um, I don't know. I wouldn't mind necessarily seeing him again just to see if anything's changed at the big league level. Um, my third for for the the stock rising or ups or whatever was uh, Lock St. John. And uh, he's somebody who's had a, a strong season, you know, all all through the minors. And it's it's been kind of quiet, but he's been quietly effective in their bullpen. And it's something that they've desperately needed <laughs> is, is some reliable relief help throughout the minors. But uh, 2.81 ERA, he struck out 47 in, in 40 innings. And um, he's got some funk, you know, it's a, it's a left-handed arm. He's got some deception. So, um that's it's been kind of neat to to see and maybe he can carve out one of those uh john schreiber kind of careers where he he reaches the big leagues so um yeah that's that's my up for my down i had uh brian garcia as well um just kind of a bummer we we kind of thought he might be a, a middle inning kind of setup arm kind of what we've seen kyle funkhauser um develop into at the big league level hasn't really happened for him so that's been a, a little bit disappointing. And then Nolan Blackwood as well. That was a guy that many were kind of seeing as a as a dark horse bullpen arm on the roster. And it hasn't really gone that well for him um, in, in Toledo. I got some looks at him at the alt site this spring as well. Didn't really stand out to me, unfortunately. But um, Nolan Blackwood is kind of kind of struggled at the AAA level. And then uh, to echo, you know, Jacoby Jones, he was – you know, just in 2020, one of the better hitters on the team. And then fast forward, you know, a year later, essentially. And um, he's not on the big leagues and he's not really fighting his way to get back. So kind of a, a bummer to see Jacoby Jones kind of fall. But I don't know. it. I don't know if it's a it's a mechanical issue. Um, he seemed to have things kind of figured out offensively. And um, it just it has not been there. He's he's not hit the big league level at his brief day. And he's not a hit in Toledo at all either. So, yeah, it could be a mental thing too, being down there. And uh, oh, speaking of mental, after Robbie Ross Jr. had his one of his worst appearances, he retired. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily say that. You know, speaking of mental, but yeah, I mean, I it probably <laughs> it, it took a I, mentally toll on. I'm not, I'm not making fun of the dude. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, and you're probably right. It's probably like, man, what am I doing? This is. Uh, how old is he? Like 31, 29, something like that. Like, I can't get these guys out. I, it, it's time to go into real estate or head back to the ranch or whatever he's going to do. Because uh, he saw some big league time, and, and I, I imagine it's got to be really tough to do that, to get up to the big leagues, to you know know that you can get big league hitters out occasionally, but not quite enough, and then just fight and fight and fight to get back there and have it not work. Um, yeah, it's got to be really tough to give up, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kudos to him for a career, and maybe he'll come back. Maybe he won't, but or maybe we'll he gave it, gave it his all. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so now it's time for three up, three down in Erie. Jake, I'll let you start this one. Yeah, sure. So uh, Bo Brisky is my my first guy. You know, we've had two straight starts, his most recent through seven innings, and it's um, – he's been that kind of pop-up guy that you weren't really expecting to, uh, to come out and perform, but he's done nothing but shove through West Michigan. And now we've seen it in Erie, which is kind of exciting. Um, it's kind of a touch and feel profile. You know, he's not going to overpower anybody, but he has enough feel with his uh, three pitches that he throws to kind of, you know, navigate through a lineup. And it's been kind of impressive. And it's one of those things where you weren't really expecting much, probably an organizational kind of soldier arm, that would be up and down. Um, you know, he has, he has a shot to, uh, to make it, make the, make a big league appearance or two. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then I, I'll go to, to Riley green, who's uh, made some dazzling defensive plays and also started to hit for some power, which has been cool. Um, he went, he went away, he went quiet there for a little bit, but he, he seems like the last week or so he's really picked up offensively, which is, exciting to see um it, it'll be interesting to see if the organization decides to make a late inning or late inning late season call up um to triple a that'll be kind of fascinating i i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised either way um my my gut says they'll lean to just keep him in an eerie this season but um that'll be an interesting kind of uh 
conundrum, I guess. And then um, Shentouf, Yaya Shentouf has uh, has done well in Erie as well. Kind of the same thing as Brisky, where he started in West Michigan, you know, pitched well there, and you're like, okay, let's let's give him a little challenge and see what he's got. And um, he's done nothing for him in Erie as well. And again, same thing. They're just now kind of starting to get some arms, some starters in Erie. Um, they were lacking that so badly there for a little while where, you know, it seemed like every other day was a bullpen day and, um, he's been a steady Eddie out of the, out of the pen for the Seawolves. So that's, uh, that's my three. Nice. All right, Chris, what about you? Uh, yeah. So I, I had Bulbersky on there too. Uh, and I, you know, I wrote that, uh, you know, I was first ID'd by you guys. I feel like, uh, it's maybe <laughs> specifically you, Jake, I, I don't know. Uh, we were, I think we were all at that game. I think that yeah. was the game where I was I was working the stopwatch uh, poorly, but uh, but but yeah, like um, this is two starts in Erie, thirteen innings, two earned runs, one walk, eight strikeouts. Now, you know, not too much into the the stats, obviously, but this is a guy who obviously knows how to pitch, and he's got three pitches. I mean, the fastball is kind of low nineties. I think we've seen him touch ninety four, maybe ninety five. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the changeup seems like a legit above average pitch. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really his out pitch, and he's got a usable breaking ball. Like it, it's not terribly consistent, and it's a little bit uh, you know, loopy at some at times. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like like you said, Jake, I think there might be a big leaguer here. It may be in that kind of like surprise Spencer Ro- uh, Watkins role. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, look, what do you know? He knows how to pitch enough to make it work in the big leagues for a little bit, mm-hmm. or maybe maybe like a Buck Farmer style reliever who who kind of leans on the changeup and throws a little bit harder out of the bullpen. But but yeah, I mean, I I, I wouldn't guarantee it, but uh, he's he's definitely a guy I would throw on the back end of like you know if we were doing a top fifty prospect list, I'd throw him down toward the bottom and say, all right, he's somebody to keep an eye on. Yeah, I was so. I was expecting to see like Montero or like somebody when we showed up in West Michigan, and uh, when I saw him, I was kind of like, eh, okay, you know, it wasn't anybody that I was watching. He wasn't on my radar at all. But as no. as we watched him kind of navigate through the the loons lineup for the Dodgers, you know that. I kind of turned my head a little bit and started to watch him a little bit closer. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting kind of a uh, kind of arm. Nice little pickup. And keep in mind too, that great lakes lineup was at its prime. You had Vargas, yeah. uh, uh, Andy, uh, pay, uh, Pajes. 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 Yeah. Pajes. yeah. So this is, I mean, this is great lakes at its peak mm-hmm. and he was able to navigate the lineup pretty well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I also mentioned green, but you already got to him. The, the, the lineup there in, in Erie has picked up pretty well. Uh, Ryan Kreidler's been really hot for the last week or two. This week he was uh, you know, 333, three doubles, mm-hmm. a homer, four walks, eight strikeouts. It's nice to see. Andre Ellipsius, Rogers guy, mm-hmm. uh, also 333, a couple doubles, a home run, five walks, six strikeouts. And, and Josh Lester, uh, you know, Mr. Erie himself, 368, <laughs> three doubles, three homers, four walks. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, again, maybe it's uh, the competition with, with Harrisburg, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, that, that lineup was mostly picking it up. Although, uh, I don't know if you want me to get in my, my, my down. Yeah, go ahead, because we'll, we all can figure um, that, yeah. So, uh, my first down is Spencer Torkelson, which maybe doesn't look great after he hit a homer and a double today. <laughs> Call him up, Chris! Two but, strikeouts, too. Yeah, I mean, so, so you know, I put out the little tweet the other day about, like, hey, you know, if Spencer Torkelson becomes Reese Hoskins, uh, you know, I... I mentioned Riley Green and, and Dylan Dingler too, but I got a lot of pushback on that. And somebody uh, tweeted at me and said, that's the worst uh, comp I've ever seen for Torkelson. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, really? Is it really? Cause Torkelson, you weren't making a comp in, in fairness well, to you. No, I mean, I think it's kind of like a 50, 50th percentile. Like, Hey, this is what if, I mean, I, yeah, it's basically trying to come up with a, a league average or slightly above average first baseman in the majors. And, yeah. and Hoskins is a guy who's going to hit 240 to 250 walk a ton, not strike out outrageously, but still 20 plus percent and hit 25, 30, 35 home runs. And I was like, that seems viable for Spencer Torkelson. I don't see why that's crazy, but, uh, and you know, he's hitting, what's he hitting right now? 230, 235, 16% walk rate. So he's walking a ton, but the strikeout rates up to 25% in double a. So, and he just, you know, I, I don't mean that he's bad, but he's just, uh, even after today, he's got 192, 364, 385 so far in August. So two doubles, a homer, seven walks, but 14 strikeouts and 26 at bats. It, it it's something we discussed before uh, privately, but it's he seems like he could be one of those very volatile hitters who might turn nuclear for like three weeks and just crush everything, and then otherwise 
just kind of he's going to work counts, uh, but strike out a lot, and not do a whole lot of damage. Um, he doesn't he doesn't really chase that I've seen, but he misses a lot of pitches in the zone, <laughs> and, and not always great pitches, which is a little bit concerning to me. But I, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's my diatribe there. Uh, the other down, unfortunately, is Dylan Dingler. And now he is down with injury, literally right now, with a fractured finger. But he he'd been struggling for a month plus now. I, I just I was checking out his stats since the month started or last thirty days. He's hitting one forty nine, two forty, two fifty four, nine for sixty seven with a double, two homers, three walks, and twenty five strikeouts. And uh, you know, one of the last games I watched, it looked like he was swinging a bat underwater. So I. I I don't want to just completely chalk it up to him being tired, but he sure as hell looked really tired to me. So I don't know. I, it, it, you know, I think maybe he's not quite as, as advanced as a hitter as I, as I had hoped, mm -hmm. but uh, I do think he's probably just really tired. And uh, I also mentioned Kerry Carpenter who you guys went and saw. And you're like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, it was fun to see him get off to a hot start this year because, you know, oh, maybe the Tigers got one, but uh, yeah, he had that 841 OPS in May. And since then, it's been 608, 634, and 568 so far in August. So, yeah, the book's out on him. Maybe it was just a hot start. And on, and on the pitching side, Elvin Rodriguez, Ooh. same kind of deal. Had a 140 ERA in May, but it was 743 in June, 887 in July, and so far it's 1350 in August. So, uh, I don't know. He probably needs to head to the bullpen at some point, but I really don't know if his stuff is going to work in the bullpen either, unfortunately. So... That's my like several up and several down in Erie. <laughs> well, on the good, the three up, three down for me would be here's on Moreno, who has pitched better as of late. Seven innings in his uh, seven innings, five hits, three runs, 12 strikeouts, and only one walk. So that's that's important because a lot of the mm -hmm. sea, I mean, you look at guys like Chavez Fernandez, who I'm still high on, but he's had a kind of rough couple of weeks. He's been walking and he's kind of a two pitch pitcher, but Moreno. It's been, I mean, he's been on a board before, and he's a guy who has some stuff. So to see him pull around a little bit is ideal. And another guy who hasn't been walking anybody, Joe Navajan, last in his last seven innings, five hits, one run, and 11 strikeouts. Yeah. Um, and this is a guy who's still considered, I mean, he's still gonna be an order guard, but still, that's a pretty good stretch for him. And he's gone out of his way, he's had a start. Um, or he had a couple of bullpen appearance starts, kind of like that earlier in earlier in the um, I believe in July he was. I remember him starting a bullpen start because it's always TBA with Erie. And the other <laughs> one I want to mention too, you talked about uh, Ryan Kreiler, of course, and yeah, Andre Lip Lipsius, who's seemed to find that groove a little bit where he might be down for a week, but he comes back up again. And that's a, like mm -hmm. a consistent thing. And John Valenti is still hitting pretty well. Nice. I mean, you know, Valenti again three wall. He's Batting 429, 529, 500 is a slash line. Excuse me, the last that'll work. Weeks. Yeah, that'll work. And his last uh his last 14 at bats. And again, if you look at it from a grand scheme of things from a uh, from a two weeks perspective, he's picked it up quite a bit, but still in the last two weeks, 294, that'll work. I mean, this is a guy who again kind of has that org soldier really in all over him. Brady Porcelli was the Eastern player or the whatever division player of the week last week. So you know what? We should just call it by what they used to be called. Seriously, yeah, screw it. It's the Eastern League Player of the Week. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what you know what division it is. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, know what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you know what we're talking about. And so, yeah. and then my down would be Henry Martinez, who they picked up from Cleveland, who I expect a little bit more out of, but he hasn't really done anything. Did we um, see him on Toledo? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not much. Yeah, he was. That was his first appearance in Toledo when we saw him. I believe. Yeah. Because yeah. the Justin kid was with us, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Go, Justin go Kidd. Yeah. Yeah, he's Justin Latta, Justin Indian Latta. Insider. Justin Sorry, Latta. Justin. No. Yeah, just, no, Justin Latta is a Justin Latta is a legend. I love that kid. good dude. Good dude. Sorry Very good that. him. No, him and uh, Patrick who will be on this week. I like those guys a lot. I like that Indians website. Period. They got some really good folks over there. You know, they go to games and stuff, and yeah. you know. Um, but uh, uh, the other. Um, Joey Wentz. I'm sorry. I mean, Joey Wentz has been mm -hmm. again struggling with walks. Um, seven innings in the last two weeks, five walks. He's got a whip of 1.83. Again, it's mm -hmm. just it's come back from Tommy John. I'm not. We're not being super critical of it, but there's something worth mentioning. Uh, it just seems like he's there's glimpses of it, but yeah. it's not consistent, and so that's been kind of a uh, kind of an issue for him. Yeah, I think more and more we're starting to see how you know. 
everybody handles Tommy John a little bit differently. Right. And just because they're healthy enough to get on a mound and, and throw the ball doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be effective right away. You know, yeah. we kind of saw that with Michael Fulmer a little bit, and now he's exactly. legitimate, you know, high leverage relief arm for him. So I don't know. It's uh, I think I'd be more, a little more, you know, critical and a little more interested, a little more, um, you know, kind of paying attention more to, to Joey Wentz come next, next spring. So, yeah, you know, I was I was spying his start two his two starts ago, I think, and he was putting out he had struck out like five of the first uh, eight batters he faced or whatever. Yeah, but then he he started really having trouble putting guys away, and it was mm-hmm. like he wasn't like he was he was throwing strikes, but it was like foul after foul after foul. Um, and yeah, I, I think you know it's it's for what whatever it is the crispness of your pitches or the the you know, being able to execute exactly where you want just isn't quite there. So like you said, Jake, I, I, he's a guy, I thought we might see him in Detroit this year. I think that would be pretty ugly if they brought him up. So mm-hmm. let him uh, get his rest. Maybe, maybe he's an Arizona fall league guy. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, check him out spring training next year. And, and I think he'll probably be a little bit better. And I don't think it's a velocity issue. You know, at one point no. in the, uh, what was that the brave system where he was down in 88 kind of um mm-hmm. area and uh he's yeah. kind of solved that a little bit so i he's hit 95 from from what i've seen yeah. um so i don't yeah. think it's a velocity issue i think it's a crispness issue yeah yeah it could be just an issue of a command too because the I, I watched the game last week this last start and again what he he was able to early on attacked the strike zone pretty well, but then everything started getting elevated. It was like high and away mm-hmm. kind of thing for him. So it just could be, it, it's just going to take some time. And as Walter said, who just made a comment on YouTube, he's, it was, really, it was a long recovery for JV and the, you know, but then JV also got the other doctors look at it, took care of his mm-hmm. issues. So he's kind yeah. of, um, he's kind of standard Tommy John recovery from what I understand. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I, I I don't know if Walter's talking about his injury back in like 2016, 2015, the triceps or oh, whatever. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, that could be. Because yeah, the Tommy John, he's still recovering from it. We don't really know. That was a um, that was a core muscle issue, right? Back yeah. in 2014. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it, every you know, 2016. Okay. So yeah, the uh, yeah, anything <laughs> when you're a pitcher and injure anything, you know, it's. Yeah. It, I imagine it's tough mentally to feel like you're ready to let go. I think that was a big thing with Fulmer too. You know, remember he was trying to pitch like different differently because he didn't want to put pressure on his knees. And then eventually it was just like, you know what, just let it go. And I think, <laughs> you know, once you can do that, that's fine. But yeah, I not to go on a tangent, but I kind of alluded to it when I was scrolling through my Twitter, I ran across something and it's like, it's so amazing how these guys can throw, you know, a hundred pitches and then turn around two days later and then throw a bullpen. And then, you know, yeah. another two days later, go again on the mound. It's like, man, these guys are just throwing all the time. And a lot of times it's, you know, with, with intent, with high effort, you know, they're trying to get guys out and um, I, it's, it's fascinating and amazing. That was my house, by the way, there's a Uh-oh. motorcycle going by. Gotcha. Um, but but yeah, it was a, a banshee. Uh, it, it could have been, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things where you, when you're a pitcher, you use everything. You know, you use your arms, you use your legs, you use your core, you use you know anything possible to to get that ball as hard and and as crisp as you can to to home plate. So, long story longer. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where if you have anything that goes wrong, it can be a, a tough tough road back. So we moved to West Michigan, and we were there out there Friday. We'll talk about. Let's talk about that before. Well, we'll do the three up, three down. Then we'll talk about what we saw at West Michigan. As a uh, finally got the last cap of my collection. So yeah. now I have. Yeah, it's now sharp, I have, man. It's really sharp, dude. This is something. It. This is something that's not been stock every time I come out there, and so now I have. This is hat number eight, West Michigan. I think it's out of every every minor league team, and they do a really good job with their hats there so it, it gives off like uh flint tropics vibes yeah that's a good call <laughs> from tropic thunder <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a yeah so that's good that's a good call I like that <laughs> so um in terms of three up three down chris where are you well you, i, I think up? you know you you've let us go first um and you were there you were uh you know charting yeah, reese olsen charting. that's that's what i you know let's hear you talk about reese olsen well so it's a arm 
Uh, so I have my note. I have the uh, all the notes here, and I've been working on the report all day. But like I said, until I was telling the guys earlier ahead of time, which was really driving me nuts, is in terms of putting the video onto my iMac so I could edit it versus going on my phone and constantly going like this on iMovie, which I do for some of the clips. I wanted to edit on my computer and get that done, but it hasn't worked. And so I will have to do it on my phone tomorrow. But what I, what I was talking about this with Chris and Chris and I were going back and forth about was yeah. trying to figure out whether he was throwing a slider or a change up. And I, I sent the video over the chip, the one that I did in slow-mo you can find on Twitter. And it looks like it was a slider. And he, um, if you have it, I don't know if you guys out there do yourself a favor. Every Sunday, David Loria puts out his Sunday notes and it's probably the best most consistent article out there. He gets a lot of insight, a lot of interesting tidbits from the minor leaguers that you don't really hear very often. You know, he actually goes out and goes to ballparks and gets stuff that's really useful. And it's kind of, it's a cool thing. And he uh, talked to Reese about that and talked about a slider and it's a slider of a picture that just had him throw as of last year for the Brewers. But um, from what I saw, I thought that there is some reliever risk in a sense that, 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 Wind up, you know, the head retreat happened. There's some deception when he comes back down, and Dayton could not get on top of it. They had really just weak contact. They had two hits. I believe it was a two hits, Chris. Uh, I think, or yeah, either two hits. or three. Yeah, two, uh, two or three hits. One, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to check while you were talking. So one of them was like a the guy put the bat out, got lucky, put it over in left field. One was kind of the same thing, like a, a little – one was solid contact in the right. But in terms of his pitch variety, I thought he did a really good job establishing his fastball. His fastball is coming in at 94, 93, 95, 95, 96 early on, and then we saw it taper off towards the second, third inning a little bit, which is why I thought about the reliever risk because the fastball was not – velocity was dropping a little bit. Uh, change up around 85, 86 – has some good firmness to it on the fastball on lefties was right and some good right uh, arm action on it and was able to get some good, good rings or ring ring rung side action. Uh, the slider will really get the curveball, which was at 78, seven or like 76 to 78, or I'm sorry, 76 to 79. Really, it broke kind of like didn't really. I don't know, like, I still don't think he was, he was trying to put. Pitching in there is kind of like keep him honest, but it didn't really do a lot of 12 to 6 action. It was very, maybe, a, yeah. uh, you know, like 12 to 3. It, it just kind of <laughs> broke in there, but it didn't really snap it off. He couldn't snap it off effectively. His slider, his change up were pretty good. Were they plus? You know, it, it, I guess it, from what baseball or fan graphs was saying, it was plus. I thought his slider was really good. His fastball was really good. Change up, it was fine. And I think that. He was able to keep – it was the best start I've seen out of any West Michigan pitcher this year because he worked quickly. He had some really quick innings. And, again, Dayton – I know Dayton's not a really good hitting team, comparatively speaking, to the other affiliates in the red system. But, overall, I thought he did a really good job keeping them off balance. So, uh, again, there's going to be a pot, there's going to be a live look right up, uh, breaking down the pitches more on base – or prospects live, and I'll probably do something from Motor City Bengals as well. But – I don't know. I really, I was impressed by him. I thought he went out there. Uh, somebody, uh, just how young he looks. I mean, he looks, yeah. he looks like he's 16. And he just, but he was out there throwing gas. And 96 on there on the gun early on, what's a good indication of it? So I thought the Tiger did a really good job. They did their homework, and I think he'll play. I think he, again, he does have some reliever risk, but I think he'll he'll be fine. So, um, go ahead, Chris, what were you going to say? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, basically echoed everything that you said except yeah i mean i thought it was the change up that it was his best pitch but that this and this is this sounds, seems dumb because i know what a change up looks like and i know what a slider looks like but we couldn't decide like what like is that a change up is that slide i couldn't decide whatever it was it was the one that was like 85 to 87 well and it would probably be the change up because i i think i heard some interviews with reese where he said he thought that the change up was his his best offering basically it it it, it was Whatever that pitch was, it was the one that got him the most swings and misses. I think he had five swings and misses on that. Yes. And and yeah, um, kind of five. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think uh, just a. I mean, this is going to sound a lot like what Raj wrote, but I wrote down, so I might as well say it. I, I thought he looked pretty darn good. Uh, mm -hmm. It was he opened 94, 96 in the first, settled in at like 93, 94. I think he hit 95th, 95 once in the second, but the rest of the game was basically 93, 94. Six scoreless. You can't uh, mm -hmm. can't 
argue with that. Fastball, it seemed like it was best when he worked up and down with it, but it's definitely a pitch, I think, uh, has a little bit of arm side run. We were we were talking about that. It seemed to be on the lower end of the velocity band, so like 92, there'd be a little bit more. So I don't know if he was maybe throwing a two and a four seam. I, uh, you know, we weren't up in the booth at that point to check the spin and so forth. Uh, it, it definitely, the fastball seemed more like um, like a barrel misser than a bat misser. Like, he, he, like I said, I think he got one swing and miss on the fastball that I can recall. He did get a couple called strike strikeouts, I think, with it. Yeah, there was, yeah, he did. He was able to move it. He was able yeah. to move it inside, yeah. And then, so, yeah, I thought that that uh, the best pitch was that 85 to 87 um, slider, which could have been the changeup. I was called a slider. 81 to 83, like Raj said. A couple swings and misses on that. I thought whatever the slider was, he was did a good job of, of locating it away from right-handed hitters. Like he, I don't remember him hanging any of them. Uh, and I don't. I also don't remember him throwing any to lefties. So it might just be an exclusively thing. And then in the fourth inning is when he broke out the curve, which was it was kind of strange because he didn't throw any of them. And then he threw like six to the first batter in the, in the fourth. Uh-huh. And like Roger was saying, it's get it's a little humpy. You can ID it. It doesn't have a ton of snap. It's a decent fourth offering, I guess, something to just kind of make guys think. Uh, overall, it seemed like, I mean, he didn't. He only walked one guy, and that was after fairly long at bat. But it did seem more like a control over command. You know, I don't think he was like really – you know, nailing his spots. Uh, but he definitely, like, he, he was kept the hitters off balance. You could tell because I think it was right like, are you, you showing some v- video there? Yeah, I'm showing the slider. That uh, looks like the slider to me. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. So I don't remember when this, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely a slider. I just don't remember what, which uh, AB that is. That's the bat where he struck him out and the guy went to second and uh, advanced to see who he ran to second. Yeah, I just I don't. Yeah, that's the way it runs. Yeah, but yeah, in your Uh, defense, guys, I mean, if you throw a slider and that kind of backs up on you, it'll have that kind of fade that a changeup has. So if he was locating arm side, you know, it it would be kind of difficult to differentiate the two. In your defense, (laughs) yeah, no, yeah, no, and and I wasn't trying to like I was trying to figure out exactly how to call that picture or that pitch because it because I showed that to Chip and he. He even understood the 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 argument we were both having, not argument, but the debate we we're having. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and and I I would just say like I I felt like it was mostly fastball changeup because of the the outs that he was getting. Yeah, like gotcha. Like the majority of the outs were either ground balls to the left side or fly balls to the right side. Like literally, I think six of each. So it was like I think you know, he's keeping the hitters off balance, and I think the change was was you know good arm speed, good. Uh, good deception there deception on his delivery overall it's not like traditionally deceptive where i don't know if that makes sense but like it wasn't like hiding the ball or anything like that but he's got that funk funky delivery that i think might mess with some hitters and i'm kind of spitballing and this is kind of like um off the cuff basically but are there a lot of like buck farmer attributes there it it does feel like that there's there's a little bit of like violence in the delivery um, I didn't notice like a pronounced head whack, but I wasn't really, you know, honing in on that. I okay. did get some some uh, open side footage. It, it definitely looks a little funky from the open side too. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I, I think they'll keep him starting. It does just feel like a relief profile to me, and one that mm-hmm. could be pretty interesting if if he's you know he's touching ninety six in the first. You could you could see him touching ninety seven ninety eight maybe in his prime, and then you know you got the suite of uh, you know three distinct. Secondary offerings, like we said, the, the curve doesn't seem all that great. But if you've got it, uh, and, and the slider and the change both look above average at times, so I, I think he could definitely be an interesting relief arm. So it was nice to get out there, and, and as Raj said, it was one of the better starts they've seen. I think Nate Wangler told us it was the longest start of his career, actually. Yes, it was. Yeah, and, and I thought again, his fastball had some really good tailing action, and we saw we saw something else too on Friday too. We saw Zach Casco three innings. Which was part, yeah. part, which was something that we n- were not used to seeing him do, and for that, he, yeah, that, was, that was crazy. It's just super annoying because, I, like, not picking on him, but like, you know, the extra inning rules. He was just nothing but like sack flies, just sack fly after sack fly after sack fly, one run. It was like ah, and they kept scoring one run, and then finally Jared Toby came in there, and I think he struck out the side, or or maybe struck out two, and, and got a fly out, and then the, the Caps were able to win. But yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, he came in there and he walked the first batter, and then there was a, this, you know, you'd never want to do that in the seventh inning of a, a doubleheader. Walked the first batter, and then the, 
threw one away. There was a throwing error. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, in that game, we didn't mention it when we talked after the game, but Daniel Cabrera had a pretty huge two out RBI double to tie the game. I don't remember what inning it was. It was one of the extras. Maybe it was the seventh. I don't know. I think it was the seventh inning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But uh, yeah, beyond that, there just wasn't a whole lot to to talk about. One of my other ups, I just like watching Eric De La Rosa play. We didn't get a chance to see him play, but, you know, I've watched him play on, on, TV a couple more times and, and he's just a, a catalyst, you know, in that kind of Derek Hill, Akil Badu mode where he's going to hit, you know, spray the ball to the gaps and run like crazy. And it's, it's fun to watch. I don't think it's going to work at higher levels unless he cuts down on the strikeouts, but at the same time, he's made some pretty large strides since 2019. So, and he's a good athlete, so I won't count out anything, but uh, I don't know. It, it, it his numbers aren't, aren't a little yeah. run yesterday. Yeah, he's just he's a fun player to watch. So the uh, the other what, the one the other pitcher I want to mention that's been good has been Garrett Hill, who's kind of picked up the slack a little bit. Uh, for in terms of Bo Brisky, he's uh, in the last couple of starts, his last three starts, eighteen innings, fifteen hits, three runs, nineteen strikeouts, and five walks, and that's kind of been pretty good with him and along with uh, Bryce Tassin. When Tassin was at Lakeland, wasn't he, until recently? I think so. I think he got called up like three, four weeks ago. But, okay. yeah, I, he, he was uh, – yeah, I don't remember much maybe about him. Maybe Jesus Rodriguez, maybe when he got moved up to Erie. Yeah. Maybe that, that, you know what, uh, Jake, that sounds right. And then uh, the other, other one I wanted to mention, in terms of the hitting department outside of Del Rosa, it's kind of – Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not – yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Not great, so, Bob. <laughs> yeah, so not great. Jake, I don't know if you want to mention anybody. No, I mean, you guys hit them on them all. I was going to talk about Reese Olsen just because, you know, A, he did well, but it's the shiny new toy effect as well. Um, De La Rosa has done, you know, he's been the steady kind of, like you said, like the catalyst for West Michigan the entire season, and it almost kind of begs the question if he's going to get a call up before the end of the season, and then Garrett Hill as well, 211 ERA. He's got 60 strikeouts and 47 innings, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Um, so those are my those are my ups. My downs are uh, Danny Cabrera, who is, I think, still currently ranked number six on Pipeline's um, top 30 list before the draftees get added. I assume that might be some – there might be some changes there. Um Gage Workman, who just hasn't really – he hasn't really figured it out and uh, with the stick especially. And um, he's kind of made, you know, the the routine plays defensively, but he hasn't really been challenged a whole lot. He's made a couple of nice plays up the middle, but um, it, it wasn't really kind of as advertised with either of those guys. And then uh, I was going to mention Jose King as well for, for my down, who's just – again, he's kind of struggled all year. It hasn't really been uh, fruitful. And uh, we we keep I don't know if we keep waiting on the breakout to happen, but it, it it would be nice to see some type of signs of life for Jose King, and they're just not really there. So it's been kind of a, a little bit of a bummer. But those are my my ups and my downs for West Michigan. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had Meadows, uh, Cabrera, and, and Workman as well. It, it was interesting watching Workman the second time we've seen him in person, and he just he really seems terribly fooled on just about every breaking ball and changeup he gets thrown. And I shouldn't say everyone, but, but it's like, he expects a fastball every time he gets the first pitch. It just swings like crazy. And it's like, whoop, he, now he had, I've, he did adjust. Like if they would double up on him, he'd be like, all right, I see it now. But it's, it's like, I don't know. It, it, I'm not giving up on him or anything like that, but I think it's going to be a pretty long adjustment period for him. He did get a double uh, in the second game. No, it was, it was, was it the second game? I don't know. Game Double second. headers. It, it, yeah. it bleeds together. But it was kind of like he poked it down the uh, the left field line. Um, and yeah, I mean, he still he still shows the the speed. He really he motors around the bases. It's it's fun to watch him. You know, on a, when somebody else gets a hit. And yeah, we didn't see him get challenged at shortstop. It it, it is it's kind of a reminder of. Uh, what is important at shortstop? If you're watching the Tigers and you see Zach Short and you go, all right, yeah, he can play shortstop and probably at an above average level, but you need to make all those plays. You can't be making mm-hmm. mistakes and tiny little bad throws and things like that. And and uh, you know, I, I I think Workman needs more time there too. Yeah, I, I think he's a guy who's gonna stick in, in West Michigan for the rest of the season and probably start there again next year. 
I would I would expect. And Meadows, uh, it's just the same story with him, man. He he, it's weak weak contact to left field. He actually hit a pop up in this game. It was weird. He had a pop up, and then Raj tapped me. He's like, "Hey, look at that!" And he had to be like helped off the field a little bit. But then he went out and played in the outfield for another inning. And then they pinch hit for him, and it was. And then that's how we ended up with Ray Rivera playing right field in that game, and Cole McLaren, the backup catcher, playing first base. It was kind of wild. And then Cole oh. McLaren, of course, gets the walk off hit, which was kind of a cool moment. Yeah, at, right exactly. as we were like, yeah, yeah. That was He's like two him, for like, fifteen. I go watch this because the guy in front of him goes, "Man, this guy stinks." He's like, you know, whatever. And I go watch this. He'll probably get the game winning hit here, and it, it actually sure happened. Yeah, sure uh, enough. And so yeah. that was funny yeah. talking about it. Um, that was fun. We and, and we, as we as we do tend to do, we met some cool people around us. The uh, the, the there were two couples in front of us. They had a, a little kid, and the guy was like, "Oh, I just." Uh, Raj handed him the card. He's like, "I was just reading the site today." I think he read your it's piece, like, Jake. Yeah, he read your piece. He, t- he mentioned the Cabrera piece. He like he mentioned how he's like, "Oh yeah, that was whoever did that Cabrera piece. Really well done." You know, he, he saw the adjustments too. I'm like, "Yeah, that's Jake." And, right. And then he um, mentioned awesome. the top 20 prospect list, too. So, Awesome. Well, neat. Yeah. yeah and then a, cool. and a, an, and then an older guy uh, saw that we were charting pitches and stuff and uh, came down and started talking to me about his his 15-year-old son and, like, how to – like, his, his son's been telling him, like, yeah, Dad, you got to get my videos out there and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't know what the hell to do. What do you guys have any <laughs> idea? And so, Flat ground, so I, right? Flat yeah, ground so I, yeah. Well, I was talking to him, and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, I, I just told him to, like, you know, look into PBR and – a perfect game and stuff get him out to showcases and things like that but he's he's 50 he's 15 and he hasn't hit like puberty yet like not to be mean or anything like that he just he's still a small kid Wait, like was but his, that was 15 that yeah was oh wow. yeah yeah he's just he just hadn't grown yet but the dad was like you know six feet tall and like you know my size so he's mm-hmm. gonna grow uh but like i said it was it was i don't know it's just fun to, to meet people what what mm-hmm. was weird is i don't think we saw a single scout no. I don't remember seeing a single radar gun or anybody taking notes uh, in the in the stands, which is kind of wild. I mean, I guess you know it's after the trade deadline, but still, you'd think that somebody would be there checking out Olson with us. But I didn't notice anybody, so it was yeah. kind of wild. Yeah, I think they were. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the way the draft occurred, and there was a lot of complaints about how it was stacked up in July, and then they kind of wish it was June. And and a lot of little guys were hitting the road and pretty tired, so maybe it was just a little vacation. But yeah, even the only person I saw that was like. Uh, any type of capacity was a Dayton photographer who was going back yeah. between the, the press box and then downstairs. But other than that, yeah, it was uh shout out to Melissa too, who um, at half triple three, she is a hardcore minor league. She, she donates money. She does a lot of charitable stuff for the minor leaguers. She said adopted several players. Yeah. She's adopted several as players. As it were. And she was giving us updates on or Daniel Brito, who had suffered a stroke on the field. And if it wasn't for, the quickness of Lehigh Valley, who knows what would have happened. And he had another surgery to, and it might look like he might not ever play again. Um, unfortunately. I mean, I know yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, just, it's unfortunate. I mean, at this point, you're just kind of hoping that he, he regains uh, health and mobility and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. that's super scary. It's the most important thing. And, 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 yeah. You know. They all were wearing his Jersey number. Uh, I think it was, I think that was, was cool. Yeah, it was very cool. I think it was Friday night and they ended up rallying and winning. So, yeah, our thoughts with him that's just it's unfortunate but uh let's breeze through lakeland real quick because there's not there's a couple things to highlight in lakeland um i think we're gonna be on the same page with a lot of these guys so jake holton doing pretty well uh, yeah, he's one of the he's not really a dude i guess but he's been hitting pretty well he, what's up i think he was what the 10th rounder in 2019 yeah Nick first Quintana, baseman Nick, well i'm sorry go ahead just the uh, first baseman i thought he was out of a, a smaller school i don't remember exactly those Nick Quintana's only in playing in the last couple of weeks, only two games, and maybe like, there's an injury concern again. I'm not sure what's going on with Quintana after he had a really good July. Um, Austin yeah, Murr nice. already has already been uh, been activated. He's got ten walks and three strikeouts. So I think gonna... I think we'll see him in West Michigan pretty soon. Yeah. Yes, I think I, I think you're right. Uh, Arello Gonzalez is actually, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, 219, 444, 344, OPS is 788. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's seen the, all, the ball better. I mean, in terms of the international standpoint, that stands out. A lot of the international players have struggled with seeing or good walks. And Gonzalez yeah. is the only one that stands out. You're like, oh, okay, well, he's not striking out a 45% clip. That's cool. 
it's not an exaggeration, but um, Ben uh, was the other outfielder. Um, Malgeri? Malgeri. Or Malgeri. I don't, I don't know how they pronounce it, but. Then uh, Alfonso. Yeah, Isra Alfonso is finding Lakeland pretty well, too. Yeah, he's he's got like six homers that's hitting 300, and it's like, ah, oh, man. Uh, you know, as Chip said, you, you can see it. You can see why people like the bat. We didn't think the power was really there, and I don't know if it will be at higher levels. And and we talked about the defense before; it's not uh, not great, but <laughs> but it never hurts to have uh, somebody who you can, you can put behind the plate theoretically, and and who can also hit. So uh, that's nice to see him performing. Yeah, then there's yeah. Carlos uh, Igrogan, who's also doing mm-hmm. pretty well as an international signee. That's good to see. And then the down. I really wanted this to be a lot better of a story, but Trey Cruz, <laughs> the last two weeks, 0. 0.095, 367, 190, and an OPS of 557. So I'm not sure what's going on. Him and Kinson Liniac, Liniac's come down to earth a little bit, unfortunately. And it's, in terms of even just like a, from a regular Lakeland standpoint, Jose King, who's back up. Um, before he went back up or before he went back to West Michigan. Um, and then there's the case of, in terms of pitching wise, <laughs> you can write a lot of cases for that on, on the negative side to a certain extent, but it has, I mean, uh, Carlos Guzman, Carlos Guzman has kind of looked funky as only 18 innings, 24 hits, 12 runs, and he's got a whip of 1.93. He's got 12 walks in 18 innings. Ugh. So he's kind of struggled lately. That's kind of that conundrum of, uh, you know, it, it needs to be in the bullpen, but when do you make that transition? You know, because at the end of the day, like a lot of these teams, they just got to got to get the innings, got to get through nine innings. And what they do at the highest levels is kind of irrelevant for for Lakeland right now. You know, it's just a matter of, of getting them work. But yeah. um, it, it was one of those arms with Guzman that I think, you know, it was going to be a bullpen profile all the way, but, it, you know, necessity, they kind of need him to start for now. So it'd be interesting to see if they transitioned him to a bullpen role, how that would uh, how that would change things or if that would change things. Yeah, I mean, I, I do wonder if they'll do that, like, to begin next year or in spring training or whatever. And uh, I think as Chip said, he's, like, rule five eligible. Maybe you don't want to <laughs> show him as a reliever and, and have success mm-hmm. and then have somebody pluck him if you don't want to stash him yet. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know, and and uh, we didn't mention Colt Keith, uh, who is uh, fun to watch, I guess in person, and also fun to look at his stats. Mm-hmm. He tore up, you know, he was out for what uh, apparently was COVID protocol because Florida has been dunked in like a tank of COVID right now. I think like the complex league is is like fifty percent of their games have been bagged because COVID, mm. like the, the entire Phillies minor league. Uh, headquarters is just uh, swarming with it but in any event so he yeah, yeah he came back and played like three four games in the complex league and was like you know put like a 2000 ops it's like all right so this this dude he's clearly far more advanced than that and then he came back and i think he he had a i don't know he's been two two three games back in lakeland now he had a double uh, yeah, and a walk he came today back on saturday so this would have been his second game back yeah so a double and a walk today i forgot he did something yesterday too so I don't know. He's definitely uh, an exciting guy, and I think we all, you know, taking uh, what what Chip saw and what kind of numbers he's produced, I think we all had him in our top ten. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think uh, I think that's a decent place for him. I'm looking now: twenty three walks, twenty nine strikeouts, home run. He's he's starting to hit for a little bit more extra base power. I think that'll be the last thing to come, probably. But yeah, that's good. And and like Raj mentioned, yeah, Kingston Leniak was one of my down guys too. It's just kind of a bummer because he's it's it's, it's Similar to Parker Meadows, although it feels like Liniac gets to more of his power than Meadows does, it's just the the contact and the strikeouts is uh, it's it's yeah it's not working out for him unfortunately. But yeah, one eighty eight one eighty eight average for Liniac on the air. Yeah, it's tough. So yeah, I you guys hit on a, a lot of the players that uh, that I mentioned as well, but. Uh, I don't think there's any that we haven't talked about. But, yeah, it, it's kind of nice to see Colt Keith, and we kind of talked about him last time as well um, on the podcast. It's kind of an, an old-school hitter. It's it's what the, the old-school baseball people love. You know, he kind of sprays line drives all around. He'll he'll pull the ball, but he's not 
you know, he'll go with pitches as well the opposite way. And he's got some feel for the barrel. And um, it'll be interesting to see if the power comes around, you know, as he kind of progresses through the minors. But uh, yeah, spoiler alert, he'll he'll definitely be in the top 10 for the uh, updated prospects Uh-oh. live board. Yeah, nice. And Skits says hello from Toledo, Ohio. That's nice. Oh, nice. Hello, Skits. Skits. <laughs> you missed the uh, maybe you missed maybe you've been here the whole time maybe you missed the uh, the mud hen segment but uh, yeah I don't know how much we want to talk about the complex league stuff or well, or Dominican really, let's just let's go right in the question I mean in terms of the complex league stuff really it's just there's nothing pitching wise or anything like that I mean we can do a few highlights but I, I think mean, I think we should go in the question yeah I mean we you know. Pacheco Pacheco has played a few games he's got his first homer out of the way uh, you know, you look down at the Dominican Summer League stats, you see that Christian Santana and Abel Bastidas are both doing solidly. Uh, Carlos Mendoza is off to a good start, even though I have yeah. no idea who, who that guy was. Carlos. And and Rainer Castillo, the pitcher, the big pitcher sign, he was off to a great start. Well, his last start was not so good, but the first like three or four were fine. So I don't know. That's like yeah. Dominican Summer League, it's got to be like, like a bunch of guys with the tools of fringe major leaguers and the skills of like JV baseball. So it's got to just be a terribly awful watch, but uh, you know, well, when you guys had Goldstein on, he was basically talking about that, right? Cause that was part of yeah. his job with Houston. And he was saying, you're essentially evaluating tools because you can't really look at results at all. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, we, we, I mean, you know, Jose de la Cruz and Adenso Reyes put up some really nice stats down in the Dominican and we've seen them struggle pretty uh, mightily, I mean, De La Cruz really struggled in Lakeland, and yeah. he's he's okay in in the complex league. Uh, Reyes is still struggling in the complex league. I mean, we've we've heard good things, but you know, it's just gonna take some time. So, yeah, we can get to those right. questions if you'd right. like. Yeah, let's go with those questions. Uh, where were they? They were on our Twitter, or did we? Uh... Yeah, they're on Twitter. All right. Well, I remember you got them. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling them up right now. All right. uh, show meeting on air. Doo, 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 yeah. Oh, well, I got some Michael Meyer. Is that the one? Kaiser 343? Yeah. yeah, that, yeah who are yeah, your biggest Who are your biggest surprises in Detroit prospects this season? Who are the biggest disappointments? And then he also asked who our selections are for the Arizona Fall League. So surprises, disappointments, AFL. All right. Uh, Jake, why don't you go with your surprises? surprises um dingler was a surprise for me um just because i wasn't really expecting him to have you know the defensive chops that he really does and uh, he's got some feel for the barrel as well i know he's been scuffling as of late and now he's on the il but um dingler was a surprise for me early on um other surprises campos has been really well i know we didn't really talk about him but there are some uh, positive reports coming out of the complex league um chip has seen him a couple of times he he likes you know what he's seen out of him as well so um that's been encouraging as well he's been you know kind of off the radar and uh secretive like oddly secretive (laughs) as a as a prospect thus far um other surprises i feel like there's more but i i was put on the spot so i wasn't able to prepare so (laughs) i'll I'll leave it at those two um as far as disappointments go hopefully you guys can kind of uh wrangle up the the straggle this year that i'm missing um disappointments i mean i guess gosh it's it's hard to say that like somebody like torkelson is a disappointment per se but i just don't think it was kind of what we were what we were sold we were told greatest hitter since mark to and the power is insane and broke barry bonds his home run record and you know it he has good power but it's not this you know prolific power that we were kind of expecting to all fields it's yeah. fine he can be a solid big league player we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier but um i, I guess a little bit of a disappointment just because it hasn't lived up to the sky high expectations that were probably unrealistic to begin with um and then for other i kind of alluded to it a little bit when we talked about west michigan but Dan, danny cabrera has been a little bit of a disappointment for me um, just because on on draft night he was kind of sold as this guy that's got a feel for the barrel and he kind of he's kind of a some of the parts like sure thing big leaguer and um the the hit tool just hasn't really been there at all this year so it's been a little bit disappointment so i'll leave, i'll leave it at that as far as uh for biggest surprises and disappointments for myself disappointments i'll start negative then go positive 
Brian Packer in a way because I thought that Brian Packer would be advanced a little bit, but it's been a struggle. He's been struggling with injuries too. He, we didn't see him at all at West Michigan. Right? I don't remember seeing him at all. He wasn't. If he was, he would have gotten that opportunity to start first, and he wasn't in either game we saw on Friday. You guys so, have missed him twice now too, right? Yeah. I think the he, last time you guys went there, he wasn't playing. Yeah, he wasn't playing last time either. Two weeks ago, he wasn't. So it, it's it's interesting whether if it's injuries just kind of like plagued them a little bit. So. That's going to disappoint because everybody's always, you know, I got a lot of love in the world for Trevor Huth and Scott Bentley, but they're always talking about, oh, yeah, he's a, he's a great prospect. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you, I know Trevor watches a lot of games, so if, unless you go out there and, anyways, I think he's cold off a little bit too. Yeah, he's, he's cold off a little bit. Yeah. Um, but in terms of another disappointment for me, has been, I hate to say this too, but it's Carlos Guzman too, because I expected Guzman to make some sort of, like, he should be in West Michigan by now. And mm-hmm. At least in my opinion, in terms of progressing him, yeah, uh, because West Michigan's de- been decimated by just every time that they get a good pitcher, they're like, "Here you go," and Erie's been just been you know, getting everybody. And I thought that Guzman, excuse me, at least would make an appearance at West Michigan, but it looks like it might not even happen. Uh, another disappointment for me, as well as kind of taking a step back, and in terms of like from a prospect status, a little bit is. And, <laughs> And this is kind of like an easy dunk, like, you know, well, well, Roger, I mean, it's kind of saw this coming, right? I mean, with, uh, you know, Nick Quintana and all that stuff. But in a way, it's still uh, Sam McMillan. I mean, it, it's a catcher mm-hmm. who looks like he's going to be an org guy. And, again, we saw him trying to square the ball at West Michigan a couple years ago. As a catcher, he's kind of just fallen off the face of the planet. You almost forget he's there. But that's been a disappointment. Like, again, you expect him at some point to do something – but um, it just hasn't happened. So um, as far as surprises, I will say there's there's a lot of them for me. I mean, I cried there comes to win for LA. Every thought it was a high of assignment, but he's done really well and continues to surprise me. Andre Lipsius, only reason why I say that is a big surprise or the surprise for me is because he's still meaning to continue, continue to be consistent. And he is showing his versatility. He's better defensively than when we saw him before. I think his glove yeah. is played a lot better than when we saw West Michigan. I've seen Agreed. him now four, yeah, four times live, and he's looked sharp defensively. He looks like a guy who could handle any position given to him at a major league level. And I'm gonna say this now: I think he's a guy who can be a utility guy. Whether bat, his bat has been, like I said, a fall off the face of the planet, come back up against better competition. It's worked really well. Um, Another surprise to me has been the likes of, in terms of even from like a reliever or from a, not a reliever, but in terms of like an outfield standpoint too, is Robson, because Robson, who, again, he, is he going to have an opportunity? Here? Probably not. It's been, it continues to, that hot streak kind of cooled off a little bit, but he's been, you know, playing average. And then the other surprise for me last, and in terms of from a, from a starting, uh, from a pitcher standpoint, um, you guys mentioned it is Bo Brisky because again, all these like low, low end guy or excuse me, low round guys like Brendan White, him and Garrett Hill have seemed to be performing better as time went on. And so that I, I would put Bo Brisky along the lines with Brendan White, who mm-hmm. I got a chance to do a report for as well. So those are mine. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, you were cutting out there for me a little bit, but I, I think I heard you mention. Kreidler and, and Lipsius. Yeah. Yeah. So those were a couple of pleasant surprises for me. We mentioned Colt Keith. You mentioned Bo Brisky. Those are pleasant surprises. Adam Wolf has been a pleasant surprise for me. Not not that I think he's necessarily going to be a big leaguer or anything like that, but he was a guy who really, really struggled down in, in low A two years ago. Yeah. And then was injured. Uh, and, and he's come back and he's been pitching well. I mean, it's still in West Michigan, but it's the high A level. And, uh, I, I think I said I made the comparison. It's kind of like a poor man's Tyler Alexander, where it's just like a cutter heavy uh, mix and match, get guys out. But uh, it's been a pleasant surprise just for you know for me to see him having success. I also want to mention Derek Hill. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of don't, don't necessarily think about him as being a prospect, but uh, you know, I mean, he hit that three run home run today. We've seen him put together a lot of really good at bats. He's uh, definitely an impact player on the base pass and the on the. In defense, and uh, yeah, he's looking more like a viable major leaguer than I, I thought at any time in like the last four or five years. So he's cut his strikeout rate in like half. Yeah, at the yeah, big and, level. 
it, and it, yeah, if walking, you do that, he's walking more too. Yeah, so there's, there's, uh, I mean, he's gonna be in the the mix for starting center field job next year, I think. I mean, uh, you know, Daz keeps getting hurt, unfortunately, and and mm-hmm. Badu was probably better off in left field. So, uh, yeah, unless they go out and buy a, a buy, you know, I don't even know if there are any center fielders in the market, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's he's definitely a pleasant surprise. It, it's it's pretty cool to see a guy like that come up and, and have some success. Uh, the negatives. Uh, on the same level, uh, Matt Manning and Isak Paredes, I think, are pretty disappointing. Matt Manning is, is I guess, I would say hugely disappointing. Duh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you get, like, there's this level of people expecting him, hey, he's a young pitcher, he's going to figure it out, but it just doesn't feel like that to me at all. It feels like a guy who doesn't have any weapons to get big leaguers out consistently. Yeah, and with Casey Mize and with Tarek Scoble, we kind of felt like, hey, these guys are ready, and there was kind of some clamor for him to – for Alavila to call them both up, and eventually mm-hmm. it did happen, obviously. With Matt Manning, it was kind of the opposite. Like, there was a lot yeah, of they, people kind of pumping the brakes, kind of like wanting him to stay in Scalito, but they, out of necessity, they had to bring him up. So he's kind of thrown into this big league, you know, kind of scenario. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah, and and I don't know. Like, I you never want to close the – you know, close the book on anybody's career this early, but it just, yeah, it seems like there's a lot more work that needs to be done there. And, and I just, I really don't know what they can do with, with what he has right now. It's a super low spin pitches that don't move a ton. Um, and he throws strikes. I'll give him that. He doesn't walk a lot of guys, but uh, man, he was getting hit hard the other day and it, it's just tough to see. And with Paredes, you know, it just feels like we've been waiting forever on him. When he, when he does get a chance, he doesn't really hit for power. We got, uh, you know, he got sent back down to Lakeland because of his six second runtime to first base, which we don't know if either that's his hip or it's his attitude. And either way, it's not great. Uh, so I don't know it's been a bummer. The other other guys that I had, uh, Jose De La Cruz was a little bit disappointing in that he ran like a 300 OPS for two months in Lakeland. I thought he might survive a little bit better than that. And and Winslow Perez, like I wasn't really counting on him to be a prospect anymore, but it really does seem like he's just not a prospect at all. Like, you know, we had high hopes for him. He was a top 10 guy a couple of years ago. And I was like, all right, maybe he can figure some things out. But at this point, it just seems like it's, you know, he's on that. Uh, oh, I've gone and forgotten the guy. There was, a, there was a dude, a middle infielder that we used to think was a prospect for years and years. We're like, I can't wait for him to get regular starting. And uh, he just never did. Then he was out of the system. And I have to look up who, uh, who I'm thinking of. But Did he reach the big leagues? No, he made it to, like he got to double A. But that was it. Like it was a guy we were like really waiting on him. Like, all right, he's gonna. He just needs the, the st- starting. Yeah, you know, he needs needs at bats. And then they're like, then they moved him to Double A. Like what? And all back down to Lakeland, and then back. To, yeah, it's like all right, okay. So he's just an orc guy. Yeah. Um, we saw. We had a question about uh, Danny Panero. I saw come up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I did a quick like Twitter search and um, shout out to to Keenan, uh, Detroit Tigers minor league tracker posted a video of a uh, swing that he took on July 31st while he was rehabbing in Lakeland. And uh, they took him out of the game and he was placed on the 60 day IL. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but he was rehabbing, you know, late July and then got injured again. And it seems like he's out for the year now. So not sure what's up there. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah. I did no, I, I awkward swing thing, but I wasn't sure what was going on with that. Yeah. I mean, he was, I know he was playing, uh, was he playing for Canada and the Olympic qualifiers? And then, uh, yeah, he played for Canada back in May. And then came back, and uh, yeah, I thought he was was hurt, and so, yeah, I, I, fortunately, we don't we don't often get information about <laughs> these types of injuries. We're not connected we like that. Be, yeah, whatever your scout tells us. Moments. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, and then I guess uh, we all did our ups and downs, or our. our Surprise and disappointments, right? So that was just the yeah. Arizona Fall League question, which is <laughs> uh, that's yeah, tough to tell. Uh, I could see Cameron getting some time. Um, who else did we talk about getting some yeah, time I mean, there? Maybe Joey Wentz. Yeah, in, in general, it, it's guys who missed portions of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Origin. Origin. Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, it's just tough with pitchers. You don't know because you know having missed the whole. 
<laughs> off season or the mm-hmm. prior season, it's like who, which pitchers really do need to get more innings. And, and I mean, I could see Alex Lang going out there. Maybe it's just guys maybe. who work one inning, maybe Zach Houston again. I think he's been out there a couple of times and, and he's working his way back. Right. What's that? Ronnie Garcia. If he's that's yes, yeah, possible. Oh, if it's, yeah. yeah, it's a good call. So yeah, it's, it's, he's it'll be like that. And at the same time, like, I don't know. Spencer Torkelson could go there. Riley Green could go there. Gage Workman could go there. I mean, Workman I lives in Kreidler Arizona. Myself. Kreidler could go there. Yeah, any of these guys that that just need some more at bats. It's it's uh, I don't know. There's always like one or two interesting players, like legit prospects. There's like an interesting relief arm, and then it's two or guys that they just send out there. Like <laughs> yeah, here you go. Like it like Danny Woodrow gets to go again because he's hardly played this year. So something like that. I even see Cody Clements too. Very possible. possible. Yeah. Yeah. He because he, he missed a couple times, so that's a good call too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. It's tough because you got you got thirty teams sending five six players. It's it's you know it's, some of it's you know trying to figure out rosters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's uh, I don't know. It is kind of strange to think about um, right now that it's almost the middle of halfway through the month, and so it's, the Arizona Fall League is actually not too far away. You think about it. I mean, if you're being, you know, time seems it's going by pretty quickly. So, yeah, I don't even know when it's. Uh, it's it starts October thirteenth. Yeah, it's only so, it's not, not too far away. It's just really really two months. Away. So, uh, was there any other questions, or was that it? I believe that's uh, that's all that I saw on Twitter and all that we saw in the question feed here. So, all right. Uh, so on that note, though, so yeah, there, there's going to be another minor league report coming out on tomorrow for MotorCityBangles.com. Check out the top twenty board if you have not. If you have, if you have, if you have any comments about it, let us know over at MotorCityBangles.com or at Tigers uh, Radio Pod. And again, if you get a chance to check out the Dan Hub uh, the Road to Detroit podcast with him and Tasty, excellent, excellent observations there. And so I'm going to finish listening to that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so this week for in terms of like the schedule wise for the, the minor leagues, that'll be posted tomorrow on our Tiger Mike Report Twitter account, which, by the way, is now only 60 followers away from surpassing the Motor City Bengals account. <laughs> well. Wow. So and by the way, I just want to like, I'm going to vent for a second here, folks. Huh. Ever, we can let's also post. Uh, let's let's post. We can post other people's home runs. I'd love to see the same vigor. And reaction for an Ad- Adrian or Albert, I think I'm gonna say his name, uh, Adeline uh, Rodriguez, Al Rodriguez home run, then Christian, then for a special trouble, some Riley Green home run. Please show the same figure, show some respect. <laughs> I get, I get it. I know they're not prospects, but for Christ's sake, man. Um, you know, in terms of here, okay, and the answer to this question until he hits a curveball because he can't. I mean, they're they, the reason why Rodriguez <laughs> is not up here is because he can't recognize spin. And that is the bottom line. Like, if you, I watched him in the Dominican Winter League in December when I had really no, you know, just watching that. And I was, do, I was looking at the reports every night. And I watched a lot of Dominican ball, but against the really good top starting pitchers, no, he's not. He's going to be, a, he's going to go to Japan. There's half these tweets on, on Twitter that uh, recognize him as, like, I'll translate it, like, bring him here to Japan. So he, he might find success yeah. there, but. Not Remember yet. we saw we saw that uh, scout from the NPB <laughs> behind yeah. us at the mm-hmm. Monday's game. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah, um, that's great. So please get excited for other things other than Spencer Perkins and Riley Green. Please look, I I get it. I get that the the, the future has been rammed down our throat, but there's other prospects to consider here. You should get really excited about Ryan Kreidler. I mean, this guy's showing all this power, and somebody on the uh, somebody mentioned at the top on the ticket. That, oh, yeah, the Pat Caputo knows what's going on in Erie. Does he have mentioned Ryan Kreiler? No. No. You know who? Uh, JP Morosi mentioned Kreidler on the show last night. I still, you know, as I mentioned on, on the show yeah. earlier this week, the that uh, the strikeout rate needs to come down or else he's not going to find much success at the big yeah. league level. But, yeah, that's true. But again, he is a guy who jumped up to Double A, and he's playing middle infield. Uh, he's surviving there, and he's hitting for a surprising power. And it's like, yeah, it's somebody at least to get a little bit excited about. I mean, yeah, come on, we said it. <laughs> but it's the same. Like you know, we get it. We get it. You you want to see the shiny stars, but we're just trying to cover the minor leagues too. 
This is yeah. uh, there's a lot of guys out there, and then. And just when you don't think that somebody can make it, they turn into Spencer Watkins, like we said before. Just a classic, like, the dude just kept grinding, figured something out, and, and here he is in the big leagues getting big league batters out. So you never know, man. Yeah. I mean, anyway, even I think it's for Andre Lipsius, who's had a really consistent season, no one gets excited. I don't, I don't get it. I get excited, but that's fine. That's just fine. I mean, because <laughs> when he's on the and, bench, you know, or, you know so. Well, we can say Jake. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say we kind of put our, ourselves through the pain of trying to to cover the minor leagues extensively as possible. Yes. But yeah, well, the the people that watch from afar they only know the names of you know Green and Torque, which is fine. Yeah, I don't. It's it's whatever. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of funny. My Ryan yeah, Kreidler story real quick. Really cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ryan Kreidler for for a quick sec. I uh, had sent over the roster in the. Uh, at the alt site at one of the games and uh chip goes i think he can hit a little bit can he i was like yeah i think so and then like it wasn't two minutes later he hit he hit one out so yeah. it was kind of funny to see and i i I'm, I'm happy to see that he's that he's doing really well i think his uh ceiling is probably like a don kelly and he kind of looks like don kelly a little yeah. bit you know that mm-hmm. big tall you know physical kind of profile um but yeah it's it's been kind of uh fun to see him show out a little bit especially lately you know yeah for sure anyway yeah i mean i i I, you know i really think about it too in terms of what he's been able to accomplish and in terms of like just already at this level and don kelly is a good comp but i think he might he might have a little more pop than kelly but we'll see i mean i don't think he's as nice (laughs) nice. yeah (laughs) yeah yeah but uh so, yeah, we'll be back on Friday, or we'll be back on Thursday with uh, Uper back in the mix. And uh, Jake, thanks so much for joining us and talking yeah. minor league baseball. Yeah, see you, Jake. We'll, have you, we'll have you on next Sunday. Until then. Appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to talking to you again later this week. Have a good week, everybody.